Hi, this is Keith Schneider. Uh, I am the other half of Michelle Schneider, um, and we are partners in Market Gauge. And this week, I'm going to go through some of the uh, key changes and some big themes this week. Um, just a little history. Um, we founded Market Gauge over 23 years ago, uh, but Mish and I met on the trading floor um, in the late 70s uh, on the COMEX and all of the New York commodity exchanges. Um, and so I have to say one of my best trades was marrying Mish. At any rate, uh, this week I'm going to take you through um, the, uh, the charts and the presentation for, um, for, for this week's uh, material. So one of the key things that um, are happening is there's some major thematic changes um, with this massive uh, correction in the market or sell-off and the subsequent rally. But underneath the hood, we're gonna drill down and see where some of the big changes are occurring. And you know, with the change of the decade, a lot of the old themes from uh, the past decade start switching. And that's really important. And of course, with the pandemic, there's lots of things underneath the hood here of this massive rally that we need to stay abreast of. So one of the things we're gonna do, we're gonna cover commodities uh, because there's some interesting things happening there the energy complex that definitely got um, toasted and is showing some interesting signs. Um, we're gonna go through all the different sectors. Um, one of the big themes um, has been value versus growth, which is um, in the process of potent potentially changing a decade, decade long trend. We're gonna look at uh, small caps, uh, versus larger caps, which is also undergoing a potential sea change. And the, um, the whole uh, volatility and sentiment uh, area, which is also showing some very, very interesting things and is at potentially an important inflection point. And we're gonna look at some risk on and risk off indicators. So uh, hang on and uh, here we are in the, uh, the stock charts. Um, this is the ACP platform. This is the new platform that's coming out. And uh, actually, before I get too much uh, into the specifics of what I just mentioned uh, before, all the uh, six different core themes, one of the things I think that's important to note is that these proprietary indicators that are uh, in now the uh, stock charts and they will be released. Um, there are two particular indicators that we use. Um, so aside from the fact that we um, basically have, you know, the, the, the price chart up on top. So right now we're looking at USO oil, but the idea is this is a core price chart it's got uh, a very simple 50-day, which is the blue here, which we're close to touching, and the 200-day moving average. Now, at the first proprietary indicator <clears throat> is uh, market gauges uh, price performance relative to a uh, particular index. So in this case, we're benchmarking um, the USO, versus um, the S&P, and we look at it both on an intermediate and a short-term time frame. So the black here is what I would call intermediate to longer term, looking at the ratio, right, of these two instruments. Um, and this red here, this is the uh, shorter term, more like about a monthly relationship. And then of course, this blue here is the actual value. So this looks for leadership. One of the core themes that we always try to zone in on is leadership um, 
and of course the core price action. And then the other two indicators are a derivative. Momentum often precedes price. So we have uh, an indicator called real motion. And we use two versions of it, one on a shorter term basis and one on a longer term basis. Um, and so uh, you can see how momentum is faring. And obviously momentum um, often is a leader of price. So when you look at the underlying price action, right? First chart, right? You can see, right? That's just with simple moving averages. The, first, the second one is looking for leadership. Uh, the third chart here is our real motion, which is looking at momentum. Um, and again, momentum often leads price. When you put these things together, you get a complete picture of the price action looking at it in a couple different ways, right? So just again, to reiterate, pure price action on the price chart, right, which is this here. Then, of course, price leadership is chart number two. We call it price performance. And then, of course, two types of uh, looking at momentum. One is based on the 50-day uh, um, as a baseline, and the next um, is based on the 200-day. With this, you put it all together, you get a great read of the overall picture, technical picture of any financial instrument versus a benchmark. Okay, so first, um, let's take a look at um, commodities. That was the first thing that we, um, we, we highlighted. And so one of the things that's been interesting is if we take a look at DBA, one of the things you can see in DBA is that along with the rest of the market, um, it got hit. But, you know, when you take a look at DBA, the long-term price trend has really been down. These are agricultural commodities. Right. However, uh, and you can see uh, on a relative basis here versus uh, the, you know, a key stock index, the S&P, that it's been also underperforming and it's been doing that pretty much consistently. You've had a couple of spikes, um, but still it's uh, on an absolute basis, very, very cheap relative to the uh, uh, to stocks, and this is probably on a 50 or a 70 year low on a relative basis. Now, what's been happening, right? One of the things I want to highlight is we're going to let's zoom in on this here. Um, is the fact that our if you look here, our real motion indicator, right? You can see we're actually trading above both its short-term moving average of this real motion indicator <clears throat> and the longer term. So momentum here, as the market has basically been going sideways, has been picking up, um, and that's a positive sign. The, um, the other thing to note, right, is at the bottom of its, uh, it's at the bouncing off the bottom of pretty oversold levels here, uh, because you can see the lower here Bollinger Band has sort of contained it. So overall, DBA here is starting to show signs of life relative to the, uh, to the key uh, U.S. equity indices. So with that, the, what I like to do is when I start seeing this type of uh, diversion uh, between uh, the price and the momentum, that's giving me a heads up that we could have a, uh, a nice move um, confirmed by all these indicators, right? So net-net, you can see, right, we're just starting to trade above the 50-day moving average. This is the first time uh, since uh, the beginning of uh, May, 
uh, that we've, well, actually, excuse me, we have not been trading above the 50-day moving average um, for quite some time. This is going back, let's see here. Okay, so in terms of the underlying price action, you can see that DBA, right, has been trading underneath its 50-day moving average in a bear phase. This is the first time it's had a meaningful pop. Now, one thing that we're noting here too is our momentum, right, using our proprietary real motion indicator is actually what I would call in a bull phase. So the momentum has purely stopped on the downside and yet price action um, now is breaking out. So this is an important uh, piece of information. Agricultural commodities look to be bottoming and is starting to show good relative price movement and positive momentum, at least on a shorter term basis. Now, if you drop down to this lower chart here, that is the um, real motion indicator with the 200 day um, as the, the 200 day moving average as the baseline. And one thing you can see, even though um, we've been trading underneath the 50 day moving average in price, we've been well above it on this real motion indicator. So it's telling you it's built up some energy. Hence, there could be an important shift here moving into commodities, especially soft commodities. Okay, now let's take a look um, at another instrument here. Um, let's take a look at energy as well. So that was the next thing to take a look at. So now I'm going to change the chart to uh, USO. This is uh, United States Oil Fund. Uh, oil fund. Um, it tracks um, uh, energy prices, West, uh, West Texas Intermediate. Um, and of course, you know, this has been in the headlines um, when it, the uh, uh, delivery, I think for February, went down to minus 37 in the futures market. So as you can see, we moved here uh, from the, be the beginning of 2020, this year, we were at 100 in USO. We're now trading 27.50. And actually, um, we were down, let's see here, uh, hold on. And by the way, I'm not that familiar yet with um, the, uh, this platform. So, um, I'm still getting used to it. And so in essence, uh, USO um, was down under 20. Let me, um, okay. So you can see we had a massive drop from over 100 um, down to about the 10 level, just under 10. I think it may have gotten to actually eight here. So. Um, at the moment, right, you've had almost a double in price, but what's interesting, if you're looking at our proprietary indicators here, number one, um, energy, at least on a short-term basis, even with the monster rally, has actually outperformed um, <clears throat> the underlying S&P, right? So one of the things you can see, just look at this performance on momentum um, and also on relative performance here, this is price performance, we actually got an improvement relative to the S&P in the energy market. This is a real strong positive. Now, if we can get above the 50-day moving average in price, that is an important, what I would call phase change and a shift now um, into a more positive mode. If we start trading above this 50-day moving average this year, right, um, we call that a recuperation phase or a recovery phase. Now, the thing that is interesting, again, is our real motion, looking at momentum here, has been beating the market 
um, well above its 50 day of real motion much earlier. So you can see how these indicators work um, along with the price action. So net net, you had sort of this compression, a nice breakout. And if we really can get above this uh, 50 day moving average in price, you've got confirmation across the board. Even on our longer term um, real motion indicator, um, we've got a similar scenario where we've been sort of trading. Uh, hold on one second here. Uh, yeah, you can see we've been trading above the 50 day of real motion, where this one is based on the 200 day as the baseline. Okay, so overall across the board, um, if we get a movement over the uh, that 50 day moving average and the underlying price, it certainly should be followed. Okay, now let's do this. Let's take a look at GLD. So one of the things that's most interesting, and I'm gonna go try to go through things a little bit more quickly um, now that uh, the basics I've sort of covered. Um, one of the things you can see is looking at price performance relative to the underlying key indices, our longer term uh, moving average um, has been tested. So we've basically come back to what I call the important uh, breakout point, um, which is, right, we're looking here, you can see with this sideways action and the uh, in gold over the last month or two, um, relating directly to a very strong S&P, even though we barely sold off, that big move up in uh, stocks here has moved this indicator back down to its very, very uh, important moving average. So we're at really support here, and the other thing to note is we also bounced off this 50-day moving average. And one thing to note is we sort of, on a shorter-term basis, have broken down in terms of momentum. Now, another way to use um, our indicators, one thing you can see is we've sort of had a divergence in price action versus of our shorter term indicator and our longer term momentum indicator because you can see where we made new highs right over the last uh, two weeks in gold or about two weeks ago um, but yet we weren't able to do that and we have this divergence so there you have the uh, scenario in gold but if we can hold here on a relative basis and find some support, um, which we have, we bounced off this 50-day uh, moving average, um, things could reverse. And again, one of the things I'm going to move to now is just looking at the weekly chart. And one of the things you can see here is on the weekly chart, we're still in acceleration mode um, without a divergence. Uh, on our longer term, looking at the 200 week, which is this chart down here. So the bigger picture, if we can hold that 50 day moving average, not breach it, it looks like the longer term trend is still intact, but we're on the cusp. So we really wanna be careful about gold here. Um, and let's take a look at um, a couple of sectors now and uh, see what some key sectors are doing. One thing that's led, which is not surprising, is IBB. This is biotech, right? So it's not surprising we had some really good leadership in biotech, but that is starting to wane. So it's interesting, you know, as the market is sort of finding some stability um, as it's so, you know, certainly with NASDAQ approaching um, or at all-time highs, um, it's not surprising 
that this sort of defensive play um, of sorts, although IBB not necessarily pure defensive, but a lot of money's been flowing into IBB looking for a cure. And so biotech, just as an industry group or a, a subsector, is getting lots of attention. But look what's happening here. You can see, right, in terms of momentum, even though we've sort of been making new highs, right, we've sort of failed or paused um, over the last couple of weeks. So um, we haven't really broken down convincingly yet. We're sort of in this wedge formation. So it'll be interesting to see which way this thing moves. But at the moment, uh, this price leadership, um, you can see, is lagging, right? The underlying uh, S&P, the key benchmark here, definitely doing better um, than this sideways action in IBB. So, you know, uh, that could be foretelling uh, or an important piece of information because if biotech starts pausing or even selling off, it could mean that the fear um, and the overall anxiety that was produced by the pandemic is also um, easing up here, which would be good for stocks and supportive of further upward movement. But at the moment, right, you can see weakness on a short-term basis um, against the S&P, um, a momentum failure, both on a short-term and long-term basis. So there, there you have the, uh, that. Now, let's take a look um, at some other uh, important areas. So one thing I always like to look at is looking at value and growth. So in this case, this is growth stocks benchmarked against the core uh, broad market, right? And a couple of things to note. Um, one, growth still has on a longer term basis, excellent momentum, no failure, right? And you can see uh, growth here on the underlying price action. Um, this is a Vanguard growth ETF. We're basically sitting right at or just under all-time highs. However, one note of caution here is on a shorter-term basis, the market uh, for growth has been waning on a relative basis. Even though it's very strong, on a relative basis, the S&P much stronger. And you can see we've sort of been on a pause also in the shorter term momentum. So the thing that um, I want to point out is you got a different story. Now, value, VTV, Vanguard value uh, ETF, um, all of a sudden is starting to show some life. Now, one thing I want to do is just step back and take a look at the weekly charts on this and just see how this theme of value versus the, uh, the broad markets have done. One thing you can see, it's been terrible, right? Uh, it's very, very interesting to see just what occurred here because this is, you know, you know, people have been talking about Warren Buffett and the fact that, you know, his performance relative to the S&P um, has not been great. And he's the classic, one of the best value investors around. But he was been in a theme which for, I don't know, the last 10 to 15 years or more, um, it's been deteriorating, right? So this is looking at the Vanguard Value Fund, right, which is not exactly the holdings of Warren Buffett, but similar conceptually. And you can see we're on a multi-decade low, or at least a 
12 to 15 year low. However, if we go back up to the daily chart, we have a completely uh, different scenario. For one, you can see on our price performance, we're starting to get a little bit of strength. So this could be the first early signs that value as a theme is starting to regain its lost luster. And on a pure momentum basis, you've got a scenario where the momentum is extremely strong and much better than the underlying price action. Because you can see we're still trading under the 200 day moving average, where in our shorter term real motion, we're already, uh, we're, we're actually doing a bit better. Now, the, what's also true is we've getting some pretty good performance on our longer term real motion. When I say longer term, longer term for the daily charts. And we're much closer to its 200 day moving average of real motion than the underlying price chart. So it's telling you across the board, price performance is improving and momentum measured a couple different ways is also improving. This is absolutely crucial. Now, the other thing um, to take a look at is taking a look at dollar sign. This is the um, cash index for uh, VIX, right, which is a great sentiment indicator. This is uh, the measure of volatility. So one thing to, uh, to take a look at here, um, I think that's important, is noting that the 200-day moving average of the cash VIX uh, has just been um, attacked um, and it seems to be holding for the moment. But what you've got here is a huge gap when the market really started breaking down in February. We had a huge gap up in volatility and an explosion. We're now back to the breakout point where the gap was. And what we need to do is basically pretty much hold this area. Now, in terms of the uh, uh, relative performance versus the S&P, you can see we've already started to break down. So it's, you know, the jury's out here. Um, one thing I would do is also, now let's take a look at the index that you can trade because we've just looked at the cash um, and VXX um, is the instrument you can trade. Now what's interesting um, is that you can also see here on a longer term basis relative to the uh, S&P here, we're basically holding um, its longer term breakout. So you can see we broke out here well in advance of the price chart on a relative basis. So the VIX was a good early warning that there was an important breakout um, and a corresponding massive drop in the market. So at the moment, we're basically hanging on here um, for, uh, for, for dear life. And it's possible, right, that this is basically holding um, its retracement level, uh, both in cash and um, in the uh, VXX. All right, um, that pretty much wraps it up. As you can see, we, we covered a potential sea change, uh, early shift in soft commodities. Energy looks like um, it's rebounding and certainly running ahead. Uh, momentum and relative action is doing okay. Um, there's a big theme potentially shifting uh, where value, which has been really underperforming for over a decade, could be uh, in the throes of a, of a shift there. Um, and um, in terms of volatility, it's got to hold these levels here um, to keep sort of the bear market um, alive from uh, that uh, volatility perspective. All right. Hope this helps and uh, see you soon. 
Hey guys, Grayson Rose here with StockCharts.com. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Remember, if you did, give us a like down below, leave us a comment, we'd love to hear from you. And most importantly, don't forget to subscribe to our YouTube channel for daily content from an incredible collection of technical analysts and financial minds. We'll see you back here very soon. Happy charting, my friends.